morning, everyone. How are you guys doing? Well, again, I will, I, I'm here to welcome, welcome everyone to our workshop. And thank you very much for joining us this morning. And I am pretty much excited that my colleague uh, actually told me that there are actually a lot of people who are uh, eager to join this workshop, that we have plenty of people that keep coming in, that um, I'm here to promise you that you'll be able to learn something new this morning and you'll be putting it to good use at your work. Okay, so it's night, so let's get things started. So before uh, we get started, so I would just like to inform all of you, all of you that um, this session will be recorded. And um, <clears throat> if along the way, if you have any questions, please, please ask your questions in the chat. And we will be answering all your questions as much as possible. And at the end of the session, please, please provide your feedback to all of us, to, to me. So that what are we doing good? and what do we need to improve? Okay, so without further ado, let's start with the workshop. So, a little bit about myself. My name is Mike, Mike Lim, and I will be your presenter for today. And allow me to share a little bit about myself that I'm actually the RPA consultant for Sybian, and I have already a uh, several years of experience with automation already that uh, I'm uh, now purely focused in uh, RPA. And yeah, I'm the actually representing Cyber Malaysia office in Kuala Lumpur. Okay. And of course, a little bit about Cybian. So Cybian is actually a company that is uh, focused in helping businesses to use their data and to win in the data economy. Um, inside, we have basically um, two major sections that in one, one of it, which is education section that is focusing in providing trainings and in other part, which is consulting part, which is uh, where I am, which is focusing in uh, providing consulting uh, for the services like RPA, data analytics, IT services, IT, service management and etc et okay let's come into the agenda for today so the agenda today it will be a uh, i mean like that to guide you through and give you an introduction of what is rpa about and of course there will be a session that you were doing the hands on of me i will be giving you step by step on how do you build your first robot and of course we will be we will be also talking about how can you actually using this into your uh, own use like for your for your work automating your work mainly and uh, we'll be talking some uh, use cases as well okay and yeah we do have a, a, a certification of attendance as well that um, we are basically providing uh, this uh, workshop for your benefit so we will be basically talking about the basic idea of robotic process automation. So in order to get the maximum value out of it, well, I am actually welcome you to uh, participate and ask questions if you have any. Okay, and I will also welcome you to uh, turn on your camera so that we can see you as well. And of course, after the end of the session, we will, I mean, you will be able to receive a certificate of attendance. If you are you are joining us, I mean, throughout the session, okay. And yeah, the schedule for today that um we actually are uh, right now we already started. So basically, for the first hour session, we I will be introducing a little bit theory about uh introduction of RPA, and a little bit about theory, go through some presentation slides so that you have a better understanding about what RPA, okay. And of course. At the same time, that I will be helping you through with the registration and doing the uh, software installation as well. I'll be helping you. I mean, I will be guiding you through that as well. And then, of course, then we will probably have a five minute coffee break. And after that, in the second part, second section, which is more about the hands on session, 
which will be working hand together in building your first ever robot and the subsequent one. Of course, it is more about um, how can you basically use uh, these two in your uh, daily life, in your work, especially. Okay. All right. Speaking about our experience with uh, robotic process automation, we, Cybiet, actually authored the service automation framework where it is basically a tools or you can call it a framework that are uh, giving either it for individual or for organized uh, organization uh, deep into the theory and uh, method about service automation. How can you auto, I mean, create a service automation? And of course, um, we are actually also an official partner for UiPath too, which I'm going to give, I mean, like in the next slide, we'll be giving a little bit about introduction about what is UiPath. Okay. So what is UiPath? Okay. So we can see that from this chart that um, where is UiPath? is basically at the top right section of the uh, chart. So what does it mean? Okay, so basically it means that it basically not just uh, uh, robotic process ocean software, but the heat, I mean like UiPath is also the leader in this uh, software as well. Okay, I mean like you can see that the, the, the com and for the UiPath is UiPath achieved the highest and furthest overall position for its ability to execute and the com completeness of vision, especially in the RPA part. So it's a leader. Of course, this is I mean like not I mean not I'm the one who make up uh, with this chart. It is basic basically a uh, survey company who come up with this chart, who basically done the survey from the market and come up with this result. Okay, and of course the other uh from the forester wave leader actually putting actually, actually uh rank uipath the highest as well in current market offering about their strategy and of course about the market presence and presence as well so if you talk about rpa in the market if you talk about rpa most of the people know that simply because they are the leader in the market and in the software okay so we can see that uh, in uh, this first uh, the world best uh, company, the, the Cloud 100, basically um, we can see that is a, uh, how do we say, uh, to make it to the top 100 uh, company in Forbes is not easy. Uh, we, we are talking about the worldwide, the tech company that about to hit to the list and it is technically very difficult. But for UiPath, then you can see that they make it for two consecutive years in 2019 and year 2020. Both years, they are making it to the third in the list out of the 100. They are the top three, okay? And in year 2019 as well, the founder, one of the co-founder also make it to the cover article in Forbes uh, in year, uh, September 2019 as well. Okay, so before we move on, let's take a little bit uh, of time, of your time, just to do a self-check for them. That basically this is a question to ask yourself, that do you have the knowledge and system to win in the data economy today? You don't have to answer me this question, Basically, this is just a self-reflection, self-check, okay? Good. Let's move on. Then now we are going to introduction to RPA. So, what is RPA? Okay, so before we talk about RPA, we talk about in uh, today businesses, all right, we are talking about uh, your businesses. Doesn't matter in what in what sector. All right, you are facing most. I mean, most of the organization, most of the businesses are facing pressure from 
multiple way. I mean, like in terms of technology and the process optimization part, whether it's talking about the new technology, the growth of the business, whether to outsource uh, the, some of the uh, processes to, to others. We're talking about market saturation. We also need to handle the market, uh, customer expectation. And of course, uh, compliance and regulation always come into play. And of course, with the cost pressure as well. The cost of pressure that, I mean, like nowadays they keep on, they, I mean, what they mentioned is they keep on increasing. Okay, so it becomes it become a cost pressure. But at the same time, the business need to take care of the core priority. I mean, the core priority always remain the same. So what are the core priority in all the businesses, which is to increase the revenue and to lower costs. And at the same time, you need to improve your customer satisfaction. OK, and you, of course, need to increase uh, employee engagement. OK, you need to have more engagement with the uh, uh, employee. I mean, uh, employee mentioned upskilling them. And of course, in the last part is about reduce the compliance risk. So these are the four key uh, priority in the business that I think most of us, if whether you are in business, you are your business owner or you are just an employee, but you can't deny that this is the core priority, that this is something that we can't deny. All right. And yeah. In about technology, we can see that um, basically since 1960-70 that we are talking about data center. Okay, if without the, I mean like, where would data center be without mainframe? And then we will talk about where will the uh, business world be without PC? Okay, where would software be? without the graphical interface. And where would you think Amazon is without internet? Without internet, where would they be? And much more, okay? These are basically um, some of the technology that coming into, I mean like introduced to the world, they basically change how the business work. And same for RPA as well. So RPA is there and what does it do? What does it, what, what, how can it serve your business? Okay. So what is RPA? RPA basically, I mean, like it's a short form for robotic process automation. Okay. And RPA is basically a technology that a lot computer software. So RPA, uh, robotic process automation that sometimes, I mean, most of the time when people heard about the word, Robotic. The word robotic itself can be, uh, you can say scary. I mean, like talking about, are we building a robot? Are we building a physical robot? So I, I'm here, I'm just here to break your myth that we are here not talking about create a physical robot. All right. But this is, API is basically just a piece of software that is going to install in your computer or in your server. All right, and it's basically it is just a computer software that mimic action, mimic action of the human that basically uh I mean or mimic some action that typically performed by human that uh interact with dig digital system and to do what to perform a simple repetitive tasks and some business processes as well. Okay, so it immediately. Main, I mean, the main focus point that you need really to uh, see is that it emulate human action. So you can see that when we human using keyboard is an action with a uh, computer. Using a mouse is an interaction with a uh, uh, computer as well. Keyboard and mouse. And what do we do? And we are using keyboard to key in some information into some software. And we are actually using mouse to navigate through a different, uh, for example, clicking a few buttons just to make sure a, a business uh, process is complete. Let's say to submit a claim, to submit a, a finance report 
or to get a report or to type a report. This is about some interaction in between human and computer. And what API can do is to interact with all this digital interface. Okay. And it is used to operate with, I mean, any, any uh, application and user interface, as I said just now. And it is also about process data in a structured format. And well, of course, I mean, like in the advanced one, we can also sometimes talk about the slightly unstructured, which we also involve artificial intelligence as well. But of course, that is a advanced part, which we are not going to touch today. And the other thing is that RPA, it can able to work continuously, nonstop, because it's basically a software. It, uh, as long as there's energy, as long as PC is on, then we can always make it work continuously, continuously, nonstop, 24-7, nonstop. And for very high accuracy, that whenever we request, I mean, like to get data and to type into the uh, software application, it will never go wrong. That is also why we say that you have a very high accuracy. But the other point is that we are talking is that RPA is non-invasive. So what do we mean by non-invasive? So non-invasive simply means that it does not require any major IT architecture change. You do not need to change your like your half of your hardware, uh, hardware server or anything. You don't need to uh, get a new uh, hardware or new architecture. Like for example, you need to add in more, yeah, we have more investment into your server hardware or anything else. But uh, it is basically a software that can sit on top of whatever that you're having right now and to perform the task. And it basically offer a reliable, fast and cost effective solution for a lightweight integration into the process and IT asset. So that meaning to say, <clears throat> To use RPA, you do not need to change uh, whatever you have right now. That you don't, do not need to have a major change. I mean, I just want to correct myself. You do not need to have a major change. Okay. And it's easy to scale. What does it mean easy to scale? All right. For business, uh, for, uh, I mean, the, the amount of work involved in the business process can be very, some can be just a few steps. It can be done within a few step, but some it can be include multiple step. I mean, like ten of step, or maybe hundred, or even like multiple hundred of step. We do not. But it all depends on how the business process like. Okay, and it also change. I mean, like difference in term of the business environment as well. And if the RPA solution is used. So the company can easily adapt to the to the business processes either by scaling the solution up, going up, or going down. Depends on the business requirement. Okay. And the last part that we are going to talk about, which is is a future proof. What does it mean future proof? So the robot, the robot work is basically we are talking about yeah, the today, today's technology. And yet the automation are extensible, yet it is able to handle tomorrow technology as well. So, I mean, like, if whatever technology that whatever you're talking about, the software or any technology that is going to change frequently in the next three to five years, but I can say that RPA is, can be still there and to doing what it uh, is supposed to do. Okay. And here is some of the, uh, more in detail uh, explanation about RPA that RPA here, I mean, like, just allow me to give a little, a little bit more theory. I know that, I mean, uh, theory can be a little bit boring, but allow me to go with, uh, go through that so that you can, I mean, like we can do the uh, workshop hands-on later on. Okay. So RPA basically, I mean, like to be exact is uh, we are talking about it is a uh, low to no code commercial of the self technology. So here, um, what we means by low to no code is basically the, uh, 
talking about. It is a uh, you can use it just like any other software easily without needing to uh have a have intense knowledge about what programming is. Okay, so the main focus of it is I mean like it can work uh automated automated repetitive rules based tasks. If anyone here that are familiar with uh, the macro function in uh, Excel, so it is basically the same thing, but in a larger scale, it can do way more things than what macro did. So whatever macro, it can only work within Excel itself, but for RPA, it can do way more than that. But basically, the main focus is about automate the repetitive and the rules-based tasks. And what does it, I mean like, it can also record the action of human across a uh, personal PC, personal computer to access system, let's say, for example, to log in to some system and to perform delineated tasks for human users. Okay, so I mean, like RPA solution vary in capabilities. I mean, like there are some difference in between uh, different uh, solution provider, but most of them focus on one main thing which is to evaluate human action. All right. And what is the benefit? Plenty of it that we can we can mention. But the, the few important one, which is about RPA, it can actually empower the non-IT professional, okay, and process owner. So let's say today you are, I mean, like you have a limited knowledge about technology where you are you're actually working in marketing, you're working in finance, or you are, are just a club or anything, club or anything, that this RPA actually enable, uh, enable them to automate and to reduce the manual workload. All right. And RPA basically, I mean, like we consider it transformative. Because it's established and built, uh, building blocks of AI in the IT infrastructure. And also we are talking about the task standardization. And with effective uh, RPA de deployment, we can we can say that the machine learning which and also gen, uh, automation are basically just a few man manageable step away. And RPA is not just a technology. It's basically not just technology just to reduce the workload for human. Okay, but it is also about, uh, I mean, when we deploy RPA, it is also about increasing the quality, uh, reduce error, and of course, improve uh, compliances and to strengthen the business uh, the control environment. And of course, it allows to uh, add new services as well, okay? And in an example, if um, let's say uh, audit, okay? An employee, but I mean, you have a bandwidth or you have a capability to audit 10% of the transaction, okay? That, I mean, in a limited time, in, in, a, in a set time. But with RPA automation, it can basically do same same uh same task, but it can run twenty four seven, which means it can run day and night non stop, and it can be I mean to complete hundred percent of the transaction, okay, in in auditing all the transaction, and of course it will be I mean like if it designed in a way that it were to find out the non compliant record, it can be done done in that way as well. I mean to to file the record for the injection, okay. I mean to, to file the the or to find out the non-compliance record as well. So we can see that um in a survey that the market leader is basically saying that automation is not a C level priority. 90, 91% of the survey uh survey organization who participate in the survey, they are already using the automation technology. Okay, and 73% out of it are very or entirely satisfied with the return from automation to date. Up to date, they are, I mean, very satisfied or entirely satisfied. Satisfied. 
and four. 84% of the company, basically they are saying that automation is not a C-level executive responsibility. So it's not just a, 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 a normal executive uh, a responsibility in doing that. It's basically also involving uh, the C-level people in adopting RPA as well. Okay, so when we look into this one, so what do we see? Okay, that technology, I mean like there are a new technology that coming out and they are sometimes uh, disruptive. Okay, and here we are talking about the survival, it is, we are talking about the survival part of many company. And we can see that, do you, do you guys know, uh, heard about Borders? Uh, it's basically a, a bookstore, a physical bookstore. So we can see that the company who focus on automation first, they basically win the market. We can see that how Amazon win the market over borders, okay? Because they adopt uh, automation first. So the trading we're talking about Uber or in Malaysia, more commonly we know that as a Grab, okay? Grab, Uber, board, same thing. But how does it beat the traditional taxi market, the traditional taxi, that if you, I mean, like, you ever experience a, how do you need to get a taxi service in the olden days compared to what, how can we uh, get a ride to somewhere right now? You can see that how the automation come first, helping, I mean, making Uber, making Grab win over the transportation part, okay? And of course, we talk about Netflix and other uh, automation adopter as well. We can see that how they do so well right now, simply because they actually in the back end, there are a lot of automation involved. Okay. And what can automation do for you? If you ever think about this one, if I were to adopt um, RPA, what can you do for me? So basically, we are talking about that. I will just here to iterate again the importance of it. That it basically is to emulate a person, okay? Emulate a person, for example, you in executing manual repetitive. Okay. If today your job, which I believe um also a lot of uh, a job involve uh data entry, okay. So if let's say for example your job required data entry up to um, 100 or maybe even 1,000 of record. How do you feel when doing this kind of job? Sometimes it can be very boring. Sometimes it can be very tired. And a lot of times, sometimes when we do, I mean, like, continue, I mean, like, doing the same thing again and again and again, mistake bound to happen. But it's a, it's a, sometimes we also say that it's a, sometimes it is a low, low value has. Okay, but by deploying a uh, robotic process automation, that it, bas it can basically emulate you in executing all the manual repetitive tasks. Okay, you can design a robot, a robotic process automation in doing that, in doing the, the, the manual tasks for you, so that you have the additional time. The time that you save from this uh, manual repetitive task, you can actually use it into a creating, I mean, like to focus in the higher value task. Okay. And in robotic process automation is basically uh, can help to make decision based on the set rules. You can set the rules. Okay. For example, if condition A, then what does, what should you do? Condition B, what should you do? And it can always make decision based on the rules that the user set. Okay. And of course, RPA provide a seamless integration with uh, the existing application. Okay, commonly in uh, uh, work, for example, like Excel, or if you are logging into like web application, some some uh, application like SAP or others, it can provide a seamless integration into it. Okay, and the outcome of it basically we can talk about. I mean like we can help to accelerate the benefit from the digital transformation, okay? 
And if you are able to provide a result, I mean like an outcome faster, basically it can help to improve the customer experience as well. And with the uh, RPA, it can help to reduce the compliance costs and risk because everything can be recorded in a way that is basically auditable. Okay, and increase employee satisfaction and engagement. And, I mean, how does it improve uh, employee satisfaction? Because we can see that employee doesn't have to be like only work. I mean, like spend a lot of time. I mean, like in eight hours of working, how we you are you are dealing with the data and feed only. So I mean, like. We are basically, I mean, I like, take that task away from them so they are able to focus on uh, some tasks that give a higher satisfaction. Okay. And if you talk about what the uh, RPA can do, so the software robot can do. So this is some of the example that what it can do. So we can basically have to log into the application or it can uh, connect to the system API. Okay. It can connect into a like, for example, con connect into uh, other software. All right. It can move, okay, move file or move folder or to remove a uh, file and folder. And then what it can do is also in, uh, extract some of the content from, uh, for example, Word document from a PDF document to extract uh, some, some word from email and some form as well. And it can also read and write to database. Okay, it can read information from the database. It can write something back to the database, and it can also uh, open email, uh, open email, open attachment, uh, download attachment as well based on uh, some rules that you set. It can also like scrape data from the web, so which means it can extract a specific portion of uh, information or data from web, and it can it can do mathematical calculation as well. So these are some of the tasks that can be easily hand over to the robot. So it can be basically handled by robot. And these are some of the tasks. Okay, commonly we know some of the tasks that we can we can we can automate it. So here we can say anything can be automated. So we can see that here uh, we are talking about in finance, in supply chain, in IT, in customer service, in HR, and each of these part is a uh, kind of like uh, every company should have, all right? Or you at least have like two or three out of it that is a kind of like is a mandatory one. But in every department, there are some processes that that must be must be done, all right? For example, in the finance part, you need to do process to pay, order to cash, record to report, and we're talking about like in IT department that uh. You need to do a routine uh, maintenance on and monitoring of the uh, server and app. I mean, uh, we're also talking about the server and application monitoring as well. In HR, we're talking about doing payroll, uh, new staff onboarding and offboarding, and talking about the beneficial administration and many, many, many others. That these are the tasks that we can see that it basically uh, fulfill the, the, the rules that are basically kind of like repetitive that they need to do again and again and again in a transactional mode that to get the task done, all right? And the, there are I mean, multiple way, okay? Multiple way that uh, the robot and people can keep working together, okay? Not to say that uh, when you read the robot, the, the robot will automatically uh, do the job for you, but, it can be designed in a way, but of course, there are also other possible ways that we human beings work together with the robot. Okay, so here we're talking about if you have no robot, all the work in bar basically manual has to be done in the manual way. And of course, it can be added or in other ways or we call on demand. So it only triggers to do work whenever I ask the robot to do. Okay, and attended in tandem, which means um, it can work together. It can work together while I'm a human working on the computer, 
the robot is actually working on something else at the same time. So we're also talking about uh, um, hybrid part. So hybrid is uh, sometimes we trigger it that it will be working with the robot or else it will be on the uh, uh, human working on its uh, own hybrid. Depends on uh, whether I trigger it. Or. Okay, so we're also talking about it can be partially unattended or fully unattended. So partially um, unattended, which means uh, most of the time it is actually you know, that it does. I mean, like I mean, if even if you trigger it, and then uh, you might not uh, aware about what is actually working until the some of the part that it will need to be uh, come out from the surface. Then, uh, like for example, uh, it required some uh, interaction. Like for example, some input from the human or from need to have some action uh, from the human to make decision or whatever, then it, we call it partially unattended. And the last part, uh, fully unattended, which means um, it can be in a scheduled way that at every day, at every at one hour, then it will automatically, let's say, create a report or generate a report or download something from the website that it will be uh, full, run fully automated at the background that without you knowing and you can just get the result by the end of the process okay so i mean like robot we are talking about multiple way we are working with it and yeah it's based on your design how do you want the robot to work alongside you or to work for you yes multiple way that we can design it okay and now, we are at the last part of the theory, which is uh, we are talking about if I were to choose what process to be automated, okay? And if you are deciding what, uh, what I mean, if you, you want to know about or you want to discover in your daily task what can be automated, then you need to look at all, I mean, like these few rules, okay? You need to comply to the rules. Okay, in order to be to get the task to be automated or some processes to be automated. First and foremost, we are talking about it is highly manual and repetitive processes. Okay, highly manual and repetitive, which means it needs human force. Like, for example, one of the best, best examples I can give data entry of uh, some form. If we were to get human to do it, so basically, human need to look at the form at one form, do the whatever data entry, and then go to the next form, repeat the same process, and repeat and repeat. So basically, this one of the example of we call it manual, highly manual, highly manual and highly repetitive. And the second one, which is a rule based process, it must follow a specific rules or a specific step to get the things done, okay? For example, I mean, like the same, like, um, okay, I, I can also take back the, uh, uh, the data entry task, okay? Then you need to take the form, you need to key in the data, and then you need to click the same button in the, in the system, okay? And then maybe you need to click the, the, the uh, button on new entry again, then you repeat to do the second form, third form, fourth form, and so on. Okay, but here I'm talking about is about to demonstrate that it must be follow a specific rule or specific set uh, of uh, process. I mean, like the steps. Okay, and the third one we are talking about the low exception rate, which is I mean, like it don't have a lot of uh, uh, condition. Okay, it don't have it don't have a lot of like like a uh, situation where we need human to make decision okay or uh, you have a low rate of it okay and the fifth part uh, the fourth part we are talking about is which is a process with a standard format and readable input type so it must be i mean like the data that that about to fit to the robot it must be in a in a standard format and of course it is a digital readable input type Okay, like for example, Excel in a, in a in a standard format and in the readable uh, input format, or can be in some uh 
a common separate value as well, CSV file. Okay, and it must be high volume as well. It must be high in volume. Like for example, uh, uh, data entry that we are talking about, it could be thousand or even like ten of thousand or even hundred of thousand. Okay, that it must be high volume. Like for example, finance a transaction that it also involves, I mean, high volume as well. That must be high in volume, must be a lot. A task must be, must be a lot. Okay, like for example, you are if you are designing a task that, I mean, like it just need to occur one a week. So those tasks are, are not considered high volume. It's basically a one, 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 one time task. Okay, and then um, flexible process that, that uh, it must be flexible in a way that, I mean, like, uh, we're talking about if like uh, doing the, the, the process in one week, but there must be some, some alternative way that we can do as well. Okay, and the last two part, which is about the, op uh, it must be operational efficiency potential. It must, uh, it must be uh, the last part, which is about to mature. It must be a mature and stable process. So what do we mean by the mature and stable process? It's not that, Today I'm about to work. I mean, like to work in this uh in this way, and then next week something changed, and then we need to change the way of working again. So those are we know we'll call it is if not really a mature and it's not a stable process. A stable process that I mean, like I've been using this uh method to work on specific tasks. I mean, like it's already mature. Okay. So now. We are done with uh, theory part already. Okay, then now let's go into the hands-on. I think this is the part where it get people excited. All right. So, but before we uh, move into uh, the uh, hands-on part, there was there are something that we need to be done, which is to get the UI part software. Okay, so. Um, in um, I mean, like here, I give a little bit of the explanation of the uh, UART, the software. So basically, uh, in the basic of any RPA software, here we are talking about uh UI path, which is I mean, like there is a uh <clears throat> three part, which the studio, which is basically used to design RPA, that uh. It can be in Studio, Studio Pro, or Studio X. But today we are we will be focused in Studio X, okay? And then the orchestration part, which is about the doing kind of the administration of the uh, robot and the platform, and of course uh, the robot and robot can be attended, unattended. And today we will be focused in uh, using Studio X in create an attended robot. So attendant robot which is something that we trigger that uh, it will be run based on your instruction. Okay. And some technical uh, information that uh, is a, it's kind of like it's a minimum requirement before you need to install uh, Studio X. All right. That you need to have uh, the minimum requirement of the CPU, which is a dual core 1.8 gigahertz 32 bit. Okay. And the recommended one, of course, is a, a quad core, um, two point four gigahertz, and of course, uh, the minimum amount of RAM is the same, which is at least four gigabyte. All right, and the software requirement that um, if you are working with uh, Microsoft Office, that I mean, that is supported uh, uh, multiple version of the Microsoft Office, basically from year uh, 2010, 13, 16, 19 or even the latest one, which is the uh, Office 365. Okay, so I believe that um, all of your PC right now uh, is basically already fulfilled this requirement. And of course, talking about the display, which it required to be uh, at least 1024 times 768. Okay, which I also believe that uh, a lot of the even laptop or just a PC monitor, uh, I mean, like have higher resolution than this one. Okay, but if you have any uh, any any questions, 
that uh, then you can you can put it in the uh, chat as well. Okay, I mean, like, if you have any technical difficulty in, in fulfilling this, please let us know. Okay. Then, please, um, you can go into this website, club.uipath.com slash portals slash register. So this is basically the, the place. Uh, I mean, you just go into this URL, then you will need to uh, first do the sign up. Okay. So basically, you can do the sign up. Okay. And then once you're done with the sign up, then you will go into this page. Okay. And at the uh, right side of the website, I mean, right side of the page, then basically you can see um, the, the download button. That's a, that's a place where you download the uh, UiPath Studio. All right. So can you um, right now uh, go into this uh, UiPath uh, website? cloud.uipath.com slash portal underscore slash register to proceed with the registration, okay, with your email address, and then uh, go to download because the file is uh, almost uh, one of the, it's almost one gig, okay, and we will talk about this one. So um, let's uh, do the registration and download, and at the same time, Let's have a five minute break. Okay. So, I mean, like also you can grab your coffee and then uh, also get the software downloaded. So, once uh, you get the thing loaded, then I'll be guiding you to through the installation step. Okay. So, get it downloaded and have a five minute coffee break. And we will become at uh, 9 52. Okay. We'll become at 9 52. And we will continue with the workshop. Okay, see you in a while. And of course, if you have any any difficulty, please leave a message in the chat, and we'll be here to support you as well. Yeah, well, let me go back to the link. Yeah, club the UI club. Um, Yeah. Um, we have already put the link into the uh, uh chat already, so you can actually access the the link from there.
Hello guys. Did you guys manage to um download the software? I mean done the registration and do the uh download, download the software. Just um we will pro probably give a few more minutes for everyone to have the opportunity to download the software. Once uh you're done with the download, then we can proceed with uh, guiding through the installation. Can can you guys give me a thumbs up if you guys manage to download the software? I mean, like the download the studio already. See a few thumbs up. This uh, just let us know if you have any uh any difficulty that you need uh support. Please leave a message in the in the chat, and we'll be there to help. Okay, there I see. Um, yep, I know that, Ansley. That the file is a little bit big. Uh, the, the file size is near to one uh one gig. So yeah. We give a little bit more time to all of you to download. Yeah, for the rest who is uh for the rest who already managed to download, I mean you, you can of course give a thumbs up as an indication that you have managed to download already. Yeah, I saw that people already have it uh, already downloaded and started to install already. Okay, so once you're done with the, um, when you double click the, the installer, that it will go through, uh, it will go through, I mean, it will prompt up a page asking uh, which uh, setup you want to use, quick or custom. Basically, you can just uh, go with the quick, I mean, quick, uh, which are the, the recommended one. So you just click next and just, uh, to go through with the, I mean, to complete the installation. Okay, so once the um, UiPath uh, is uh, installed, then basically you can, if you if you see this page, okay, then you just need to choose the community license. For today, we will be using the community license, okay? So once you've done with the, I mean, like you select the community license, then you'll be asked to choose a profile. Okay. So if you have to choose a profile, then today we will be working on the UiPath Studio X. Okay. Studio X. And when you select the Studio X, then it will ask you. Like whether do you want to uh uh preview or the stable version that 
then we will recommend to use the preview version that you get a more latest update from UiPath. Okay. So yeah. Remember this three part. Once you're done with the installation, then you'll be prompt to, to ask like choose the activation method that we will use the community license. Basically, it's a no license key is required. And then we will choose the Studio X profile and choose the update channel that we choose the preview method. Okay. So before I proceed, I just want to check again is uh, anyone is having any issue with the uh, installation or to choose the profile or anything, just let us know. So once done the installation and everything, Yep, I uh, for I mean like unfortunately, it doesn't support Mac at the moment. So uh, yep, it currently only support the Windows. Not yet. Okay. Is there any other um? Well, how about the rest? You managed to install already? Just give me a thumbs up indication that you have done. Okay, so I see a few thumbs up. Installation in progress. Okay, then um, I see a number of, of thumbs up already. So um, I will be continuing, but at the, at the meantime, this uh, Michael will be in the chat helping for those who are still like uh, having some uh, difficulty in the installation. My colleague will be there to help. In the meantime, I will I will be I will go on. Okay, so once you open the Studio X. All right, then basically you will see this part. You will see this window. All right, that basically, I mean like uh, you go into tools. Okay, and then at, this, at the, uh, once we, I mean like you click into tools and then in the in the second section that you choose, I mean, you click on the UI path extension. Okay, UI path extension, then, um. We will be required to install the XL add-in, okay? Because in today's workshop, we will be working on uh, XL add-in, okay? The add-on that we need to install. All right. And if we are done with this part, then the next part is you will also require to install the extension for your web browser. All right, so um, there are uh, three available uh, add-in for the three different major browser, whether it's Google Chrome, uh, Microsoft Edge, or Firefox. And if you are using, I mean, which one is your preference? And you just install the uh, browser of your choice and install the add-in. Okay, so whether it's Chrome, Microsoft Edge, or Firefox. All right. So I think this step should be quite fast in installing the add-in. All right. And of course, if you have any difficulty, please do let us know.
Okay, uh, just a reminder again. The XL add in and the browser extension. Okay. Done. Managed to get it done. This is kind of a straightforward steps. Okay, so if you have managed to uh, install the add-in and the uh, uh, extension already, then you are all good to start to build your first robot. Okay, so in order to build your first robot, that now you will require to, uh, I mean, you open up back, which uh, you click on the start again, click on start. And then in the new project, you click the blank task. That is where uh, we will be working on building the uh, task. Okay. So building the first task, I mean, building your first robot. Okay. So, I mean, to begin with uh, the building the first robot, so we are going to um, do something fun first. Okay. That did you ever think of like what will be your um, unicorn name, okay? So, I mean, like if you were to be in a unicorn, what will you be called, okay? What will be your name? So now we are going to, I mean, to build a robot that access to the unicorn name generator and find out uh, what is your unicorn name. So basically, um, you just need to go to the web page, okay? W w.rpasamples.com slash unicorn name. Okay, so this is the, the website. Okay, which I will be putting. Okay, the website is there. So uh, you can access that. Okay. Then, um, of course, in the next part, you'll be also required to open the Excel sheet. I'll be sharing you the link of the Excel sheet as well. I mean, where can you get the Excel sheet? I'm sharing the SharePoint. Okay, can I mean that I already put the link in the chat? And that is the place where you can actually download the Excel file named Unicorn, Unicorn name. All right, you can download it from there and put it in your desktop. Okay. So, wait. And the next part. So once you get the uh, Excel file and everything, then we will need to uh, design the, the robot. Okay, so how what are we going to do is that the first step that basically you put a, a key, your name and your birth date. Okay, and we will basically extract the, your name and your birth birthday month and put it into the unicorn name generator. Uh, okay, and then the second step, is to click on the button get name and then it will basically generate your unicorn name and what we need to do is basically to get the unicorn name and then copy this text and put it back into the excel file okay so let's uh this is what you need to build a robot okay you need the excel file which I mean, I already shared in the in the chat earlier. And then uh, you need to have a browser, okay? And then uh, browser and pro uh, go to the, I mean, uh, 
go to the link rpasamples.com slash unicorn name. All right. So just to make sure again, before you proceed, make sure that you have the UI path, uh, the browser extension and the XL add-in uh, is installed. Okay. That you can find them in the home and the sky and under the, the section two. Okay. And then, then we will need to type in. Okay. So let's do the demo together. Okay, let's do the, let me open my UI file. Can you see my screen now? Can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. I saw that people see my screen. So here we click the new, I mean like the new interface. I mean, of course, new version seems a little bit different than I showed just now, but it's fine. That how do we do is that from this part that we can see at the start section and then under the project, we click new and then a new blank task. And then we give it a name, unicorn name. Okay, so you, you will have to require to give a process name, the location, and the this, uh, you can give a description. Uh, this task is to generate my unicorn name. Okay, so once it is done, then of course you will require to choose. I mean, where do you want to put it? So let's say I will just put it in a demo. Them. Okay, I select this folder and that's great. Okay, so once you create, then it will take a little bit of time and before we work on it, this it will run a little bit. Take some time. Yeah, it's almost ready. All right. There we go. So let me close this uh, tutorial, save the tutorial later. No. Skim, skim, skim. Yes. Okay. So this is the UiPath Studio X uh, Studio. I mean, uh, this is the platform where basically you can use this part, you use this software to create your robot. Okay, so um, of course, the reason that we use, use a Studio X is uh, basically it is more user friendly. That basically it is catered for the community, uh, uh, more common use that it doesn't require any programming that I mean, you will be able to create your robot as well. All right, allow me to uh, 
I mean, uh, guide you through a little bit of the, the whole interface of the uh, UiPath Studio X, that at the left side, that we can see that this is all the activity. Okay, so what are the activity about is all the, what are the things that you can uh, design the robot? Like for example, use a type into, all right? And then like here, if the resources that, what type of the software that you want to use, like for example, some uh, pre-designed template that you can use Microsoft Outlook, Microsoft Excel, uh, Google, uh, Jamie Gmail, Outlook 365 and others. And of course here, there are many other things that like, for example, SAP that we can use. Uh, what can we do with Excel? Like what can we do with the uh, cell? Uh, uh, whatever that you, some action that you can be work with Excel. And of course, other thing as well. Okay, so come back to the uh, task that we required to uh, get the unicorn name. Okay, so first thing is we see that we need to use, uh, you see this part under the activity resources that you see use Excel file. Okay, so we basically click and drag over. Click and drag over, then you will see this uh, windows pop up in the design section. Okay. So um, just to check again, did you guys manage to uh, get the uh, unicorn name, the file name, uh, the Excel file? So if you already place it inside uh, at your desktop, let's I mean like at the left side button, then you click, okay? You can browse for the file. So just go to browse for your file. Where is that? Uh, okay. For me, I actually place it here. Okay, this is my file name. And yeah. So for you, you just basically, where you place the, um, the unicorn name Excel file, just navigate there and to get the Excel file. All right. And then what will be the second step? Okay. Mike. Where we get the Excel Sorry, Mike. Quick question: Can you zoom in a little bit because it's difficult to read for people? Oh, too big. I mean, too small. Yeah, Allow too small. To zoom yes. In. Thanks. Would it be better right now? Absolutely. Thanks so much. All right. Um, apologize about that. Okay. So here, uh, we are just uh, a quick rewind a little bit. So this is a button where you can click and to browse for your uh, the Excel file name, the, the unicorn name Excel file. Okay, so this is the first step. And then, of course, we need to get the name and to go to the uh, RPA, the unicorn name generator. So what we need to do is that now we need to find the browser. Okay, at the left side, so we type use browser. Okay, so that you can see that in this part, there is a tool called use application slash browser. Okay, so we basically we just drag and drop this into the, I mean, we drop the activity into this part. Okay, so. Um, then you need to open up your browser. Okay, so you can see my browser. Actually, I'm using Google Chrome. It can be the choice of your uh, browser. And I click on this button, indicate application to automate. Okay, so when I click this button, all right, so you can see when I point to my browser, it actually have a green window on it, okay? Is a green window. So basically, I'm, I'm actually I want to use this one. So when I click, then it will basically indicate my uh, browser. And then here I 
how how do I assign? I mean, the, to to navigate to the browser. I mean, to the unicorn name generator. So basically, is a uh, here. I type the text. Okay. So so what is the name again? Okay, so I put it here and save. Okay, so can, can you see? Can you see the link? rpasamples.com.unicom names. Okay. Or the other way you can do is that before you even drag this activity in, with the browser that is already navigate to the page. Okay. So when I use the uh, indicate, I mean, use application of browser when I click and I click on this, uh, it will already have the uh, URL include, included already as well. Okay. On this part, then, yep. What are we going to do now? Okay, so what are we going to do is we, we need to get the your name, okay, and to type into this website. So what are we need to do is we need to use this activity, type into, okay, type into, and then we drag and drop and under the section of the use browser uh, part, we drag this one in, type into, okay. Then we can see that in the type into, we need to indicate, okay, type to which part in the uh, uh, browser. Okay, so I click on the middle of the part indicate in Chrome. So what to type, where to type in. When I click, then you will prompt up this window and then you will see the green box moving around. So we need to type the name here. What is your name? And I need to type it here. So I basically just click this button. I click the this this section. Okay. And yep. So I can appoint the anchor. So the anchor is basically kind of like where is the place that I mean like as an anchor point of uh how do I find this uh, element easily? All right. So once you can follow this step, then I click boom. Okay. So then I will need to uh, Good. Mike, Mike, select sorry, the free. value. Mike, sorry, sorry to yeah. interrupt. Yes, um, a couple of people in, in the chat are asking if you would be able to redo the first two, three steps of building the application because it's going a little bit too fast for them. Am I going a little bit too fast? Okay. Um, all right. Um, allow me to, 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 to go back. Allow me to go back. Then, uh, um, all right. Let so maybe see. if you just start from a blank canvas again, um, I think that would be good. All right. So I think uh, people, uh, some people is behind, right? Yes, Allow correct. Me to, okay. Yeah. Um, let me start all over again so that all of you can uh, I think all of you uh, back into the same page again. All right. So now I mean, come back to the uh, Studio X. So this is the place that uh, we design the robot. So right now, I mean, come into the, the, the task that we want to do, that we want to get our unicorn name. Okay. So basically, we need to get uh, the basic idea is we get our name from the Excel file. We type in our name from the Excel file. And then um, we extract the name from the Excel file, go into the browser, type, the, type your name, and click generate to generate your uh, unicorn name. Okay, so 
right now we need to indicate what excel file i mean the excel file first under the uh, activity resources that you see uh use excel file and the activity use excel file so how do i use this one is basically i can double click or i can use drag and drop okay so just now i tried double click okay or i can use drag and drop both work the same way all right so once this activity is on i need to indicate the unicorn name excel file and i need to search for the file for the file so how do i search for the file is basically you see the tiny little uh folder icon which when you when you when you mouse over over that you see browse for file that what we do what we need to do is that we need to search for the file where you actually save the file it can be in your desktop it can be in your folder or anything so for me actually i place it here unicorn name okay so once i located this file i just click open okay open so open now i already uh located the unicorn name unicorn file name okay so next step we need to indicate the page all right we need to go into this page okay we need to go into the this page where we can key in our uh, name to get our unicorn name so how do we do that is come back into the left side and under the activity resources and then use the activity name use application slash browser this okay so we drop the activity here manage uh, to follow so far uh, sorry uh just now when you create access sheet unicorn mm -hmm. is that uh access sheet where do we we have to create that excel sheet first how do we it's either uh it's either you can create the excel sheet okay or actually i shared the i shared a link earlier where you can download the excel file oh allow me to share the link again yeah yeah, yeah sorry so that part uh, um let me yeah. let me share it uh, mike because the link you shared was not opening for uh, some people so i have created a, one that is opening for everyone yeah. i shared it in the chat yeah. right now so yeah you can go to the link that yen just uh actually open up i mean just create a new sharepoint that you can download the file from there again so you see that there is two excel files there okay and unicorn name you just download the you just download the excel file name uh the unicorn name the excel access and just save it in your desktop or whatever it is and then in this part which is to select the unicorn name excel file okay then allow me to repeat again that on the website on the browser i want to use this browser to type in the name so i use this activity use application or browser i drag and drop come into here and i click on this part indicate application to automate okay so when i click this part then it will, it will basically minimize the UA, uh, UFL Studio and prompt up this, uh, this window. Or if it's not, then you basically, what you can do is you can just click F2, it will pause for a while, and then you open up your browser. Okay, before you start the selecting what browser to use again. F2 is the function that allows the UFL x to stop for a while before selecting so that you have the chance to open up your browser so you open up your browser so here i'm selecting this browser and basically it come into it select the browser and of course include the url as well okay manage to follow okay 
So once you already indicate the browser, all right, and then I use the activity type into because I want to type your name that we get from the Excel file to type into their website. Okay, so I use the activity type into, okay, type into. Um, and I just put it here. Okay, so now I see the activity type into is here. And right now, I need to indicate where can I type into their website. Okay, so here, I again, I indicate in the Chrome. I click again in the in the under the activity type into. I click. Then now I need to indicate where should I type my name. Okay, so here right now I see you see mainly is basically I select the box for me to type into. So I click. Okay, so here it automatically indicate this is the anchor, and okay, so we we'll just click okay. We just click confirm. All right. So once I click confirm, okay, right now I need to select the value. Okay. Which means I need to get the name from the Excel file uh, to type into here. So what can I do is in the activity type into that you see type this under the section type this, you see select a value. So I right now I need to select the value that I can extract from Excel to type into the website. So I can click the plus button. You can see the tiny little plus button. When I click, then it will prompt up a window. Okay. And then I select the Excel file. Okay. And then I can, I can just click indicate in Excel. Okay. So when I click indicate in Excel, Wait a moment. Yeah, it will open up the Excel file that you indicate just now. Okay, so here you can see that I have name, I have birthday month, and yeah, I have a, a unicorn name already. But here right now, I just want to click on the uh, column uh, in the A2. So basically, this is my name. Okay, I, I need to select this one to type into the website. Okay, so once you select your name, and then you can see that on top of the uh, Excel, that you can, there is a confirm or cancel. So basically, this is to confirm that I want to select this value to type into the uh, website. Okay, so I click confirm. Then it basically, you will just close the Excel again. So here you can see that under Excel, under the column A2, this is the value. I'm going to select that value if regardless of what name. I mean, that will be following what is your, your name. Okay. And then um, I need to, of course, what am I do? What am I going to do next is once I tick, uh, click my name. So I need to click the button, get name in order to get your unicorn. Okay. So here what i do next is i search for the function click okay i search because in originally here i i don't see the activity click okay so here i just search click so this is basically a shortcut for you to identify your uh, activities all right so here i have found, i found the click activity okay then i drag and drop after the type into activity okay so you see i drag and drop then i see the click activity which is after the type into activity all right so here i need to indicate the button which to click on the website get name so again i click on this button indicate in chrome i click okay and i want the computer i mean the software to click this button okay this button get name 
So I, I indicate on this button. Okay, and I confirm. Okay, confirm the selection. Okay, so now it is done. Okay, get name. I mean, like the, the click on the button, get name. Excuse me. And now you can, uh, of course, do some setting. What type of a button? I mean, what type of click you want to, to uh, use? So basically, it's a single left click button. One click is basically one click to get the name. Okay. And then, of course, so what can we do? You see, for example, okay. So if I type my name, so when I click the get name, so this is what happened. Okay. I will get my name. I mean, my unicorn name to be exact. Okay. So how, so now I already got this name. So I want to take this name and save it back into the Excel. So basically you can see that my Excel file is here. So what I need to do is I need to save the value from the website, this value, my unicorn name, and come back, I mean, to save into this section. Right. It's a unicorn name. So what do I need to do next? is uh okay come in come back into your studio x search for the activity get x okay so if you type the activity search for the activity get text then you basically see the activity okay so again i select this activity get text okay get text i drag and drop after the click activity, okay. After the click activ activity, I drag and drop here. Then I come up the activity, okay. So right now I want to select, I want to get this text, my unicorn name, okay. So what I need to do is I indicate this one. So you see. You basically select. Be careful because sometimes if you navigate over, then it might it might do a wider selection. So right now we just want to make sure that it will choose the unicorn name. So we make sure that it have a full selection on the, uh, your unicorn name. For my one, that you can see that you actually just selecting delightful twinkle street. So this is my unicorn name. Just make sure that it just selecting the text, and I click. Okay. So now it already identified the target. So I just confirm my selection. Okay. So you can see that basically you this one. Okay. So once I get the text, of course, then where do you want to save this text? Okay. Then basically the next step is to once you indicate you need to save this value to somewhere for, for this uh, task. We need to save this value back into the Excel file. So we click on the small little button on the plus again. Okay. We click. And then, of course, we point to our Excel. And then the next step is to indicate in Excel so that you can indicate where do you want to save the value. Okay. So, yeah, indicate. Then we will click indicate. Then of course you will you will prompt back your Excel file that right now I want to save in C2. Okay, column C2. Okay, C2. So this is the place I want to save my unicorn name. Once I select this part, this uh C2, column C2, then I just click confirm. Okay, I click confirm. Then now you see you basically in the in this activity, what does it do? Is it get your unicorn name? and save to your Excel file under sheet one and C2, uh, column C2, okay? So once it is done, then you can try to run your first robot. But first, what we need to do is, of course, we just close the browser, okay? Okay, and of course, I close my Excel as well. I just close this Excel. 
Okay, they ask me to save. Okay, I want to save this one. Okay, so <clears throat> then what we need to do next is to we go to the top, okay, at the top section that you can see, you can save your project. And then uh, the most important part is you can see this part, this one, the run, okay? Or you can, you can use the keyboard shortcut F5. So here, I mean, I just don't want to make things complicated. I basically just click on run. But in order to make sure that, I mean, that you can see things running automatically, just to make sure that you close your browser and you close your Excel, okay? Once you make sure that your Excel is closed, your uh, uh, browser is closed, then you click on the button, okay, run. Okay, then I now click run. So basically, it will compile your activity, everything. It will run, and then it will, it will, it will, the robot will run automatically. There we can see. Okay, then you see it start running. Open up the Excel file. Open up the website. Put the name, get name. Okay, I mean, of course, it go too fast. Uh, it go a little bit faster than I mean, like. We can imagine that everything done in 10 minutes. So when I open back my Excel file, okay. Okay, see, I got my name. I got the unicorn name here already. Before, before, before just, I mean, like just now, I actually, when I save the file, it is without the uh, unicorn name. So what does it do is basically open up the website. Okay. The unicorn name. Yeah, I think close ready. Okay. So basically, what does it do is you open up the Excel file, you get the text, you go into this uh, website. Okay. Go into this, this website. Okay. And type the name get the unicorn name and save it back to the Excel file. And this is the result that we saw. Okay, this is the result that we have. Okay, so name, of course, you can do more, definitely. Then of course, if you insert your, okay, I mean like, allow me to, to, to just to add on something as well. Okay, so, you want to right now, I just remove this one. Of course, here you see there is an option to select what is your birthday month. Okay, for mine, it's a December. So, of course, there is a value that we can. This is to type in. And in the, this drop down list, basically, what we need to do is we need to basically, the way we do manually is we click the, uh, the button here and then we select uh, the month. And of course, uh, we type in uh, name. This is the manual step. Okay, in here. Okay, in this part, in the in the robot, what can you do next is of course you also input the um, the unicorn the the your birth month. Okay, so after I do the type into. Then the second step, of course, what I want to add on into this uh, workflow is to select the uh, birth month, birth, birthday month. Okay, so now because that one involves mouse activity, mouse click activity. So basically, uh, I want to click and select. So right now I use the function called activity called select menu item or select item. Okay, select item. So you see this select item, I drag and drop after the type into activity. So because that is the step we want to do after we do the type in the name. Okay, so I type in the name. Okay, I select. Then you see that this uh, new activity appear. And right now we need to indicate on which drop down list that we want to select item. Okay. And then here, I just indicate this one. And then, of course, it jump to my uh, this page. So this is the part, okay? 
where I can select the month of my birthday. So, okay. I just select this one. And I confirm the selection. Okay. And I go back to the, uh, this activity. And then it will, it will require to know what item to select. Okay. Of course, in the Excel file, it is given the birthday, birthday month as well. So I want to, I want the robot to select this value. And how can we do is that, of course, we need to indicate this value as well. And we come back into this activity. And yep, then we can select. You just click this uh, small little button. Then we uh, select Excel and indicate in Excel. Okay, so the both month is at column B2. So I just need to select B2. Okay, and I confirm my selection. Okay. So, yeah, right now, the first step is to type, first step, type into my name. Second, select my, uh, select my uh, birthday month. The third step, which is to click the button, get name. The fourth step is to get my unicorn name and put it back, I mean, save it into my Excel file, into the Excel file. So again, allow me to close the uh, browser and close my Excel. You see, right now, I just want to make sure that I don't have the unicorn name right now, that when I put in my name and both mine, my unicorn name will be different than just now. Okay, so I just save this file, close it. Again, I run this uh, robot again. Okay, then you will start running. Open up the Excel file. Open up the browser. Yep. It is done quite fast in just like 16 seconds. Within, everything is done within 16 seconds for all the activity that it done. Okay. So come back into my Excel file. Then you can see. Yep. I get my unicorn name. Okay. Unicorn name. I have my name. Uh, input my name, December. And this is my unicorn name. Delightful Frost Fire. So, yep. If, we, if I were to be a unicorn, then I would, I would name as Delightful Frost Fire. Of course, um, that you'll be have uh, some funny name for yourself as well. But however, this is the first robot that you can create. Okay. Okay. So I mean like well done. You have already created your first robot. It looks very simple, isn't it? So come back to the slide. I mean, like we have already done everything. And we follow along. And then you manage to uh, create the, and generate the unicorn name and you get it and save into the uh, Excel file. And this is uh, one of the very first robot that all of you have created so far. Okay. And of course, there are more things that I would like to show you. Okay. Of course, and of course, we do the advanced part already. So I mean, they modify the existing part, which is to add an extra challenge to select, I mean, to do this birthday month as well. Okay. So based on this activity that um, <clears throat> you can see that this kind of activity, I mean, like, of course, we are, we are trying to do it in a fun way that you are generating, I mean, uh, create the first robot as a, uh, to get a value from Excel, type into a website and you get the value. But put it into, I mean, real life application that there is some work 
that basically, I mean, like you need to do the similar action. Like for example, uh, you need, to, you need to insert data into some application, like for example, SAP. Okay, and you need to or you need to provide some information in the questionnaire, or you are about to create a new user for a new employee. Okay, because all these steps you actually following a specific set of rules or specific uh, process step in to make this possible. Okay, so you can try to relate all these things. I mean, all these steps into your uh, daily work as well. That. There are a lot of possibility that you can think of on how can you work on it. And yeah, of course, in the human design, of course, I'm now I'm talking a little bit about how do you do the design from human, like in human design to robot design. So if you were to draw a workflow on how do we get the task of getting the unicorn name, so basically we just start and then we just like, like for example, uh, open the RPA uh, sample website and then get the unicorn name in the second step. In the Excel file, get the unicorn name. And then we just type into the website and we get the file. And then, of, then the next step is to send the email signed with the unicorn name. Okay. Could be, for example, so this is the step. It looks so simple and straightforward, right? But if you were to put it into the robot path, we need to uh, be a little bit more specific simply because in this part, we are talking about uh, where to type into, what is the mouse click that required, how many mouse, mouse click required, and we were to draw everything down and we need to connect everything by arrow. Okay, so if you were to put it into the robot path, then it will be more details than the human path. Okay. So you can see that uh, here you can see start with the workflow and then we open the unicorn name, okay, the, the Excel file. So the application required is Excel. And then we open up the website, which I mean we require Chrome or Edge or Mozilla to open up the website, okay. And then I need to select, okay, enter your name. Okay, type into the section, select your name, and you using the data in uh, you are uh, A2. Okay, the column cell A2. Okay, and then of course, uh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, in this part, then of course, you need to key in your uh, name and select your uh, button and so on and so on. So you can see that how it's uh, different from the, I mean, the robot path, which is more common, I mean, like in more details than the human design path. Okay. So this is something for you as a reference as well. And of course, um, there are more things that we can do. Okay. Uh, that, uh, let me go next. Okay. Of course, the next part, I mean, like I would, of course, uh, allow me to, to go extend a little bit that uh, we can basically show how you can work on this uh, activity as well. So basically, this activity uh, is to do the data entry as well. Okay, data entry into a web application. Okay, so for example, now you are, you are a logistic company whereby you were you are going to work on some uh, uh, manual, manual work, which is to create a new uh, supplier, okay? So right now, what are we going to do is we are all going to automate the supplier entry part and to make everything automated, okay? So what we need to do is um, back to the Excel file. I mean, like the Excel file that my colleague uh, Yen has shared earlier. In the, in the SharePoint that you can see, uh, just now you see two Excel files. One is a uh, uh, unicorn name, and right now you need to use the second Excel file, which is a, the Excel file name supplier. Okay, so download that uh, supplier uh, Excel file into your desktop first. 
And of course, then we will need to require to open up the procurement system as well, which I will show you in a while. And what do we need to do is, of course, to insert the data from the Excel file to the website. OK, and yeah, that's what we need to do. Yeah, so this is a supplier page that what we need to do. So it's a uh, rpasample.com slash supplier. All right, I will put this uh, into the chat as well. And then we will start working on it. OK, so this is the Excel file that um, you have the internal name, external name, and of course the industry. OK. And we need to insert this uh, when we create a new supplier. We need to use, I mean, the key in the internal name to the section internal name, and then we type in the external name. Of course, then we need to select the industry as well. OK, and then we need to save this page, uh, save this one to create a new supply, supply information. OK, and then we need to click the button save. And so this is the robot path. What we need to do, so we need to start with uh, open up the API, I mean the supplier page. OK, click on the button, uh, new supplier button, and then open up the Excel file get the value cell A2 into the browser and so on and so on. After that, once done with everything, then we save the button, uh, we save. Okay, so let's put it into action. Okay, so right now, let's create a new uh, uh, activity, a new, uh, new project. Okay, so go into the most top left uh, corner, top uh, left corner, then you click the home button, okay? And in uh, the section start, and then I click create, I click on new, I click a blank task again, okay? So right now we are working on second task, just create a blank task again. So this one is a create supplier. Okay, I just give a process name and I select where should I save again, desktop, workshop demo. Okay, so this is where I save again and give a description. This task is to create new supplier, supplier entry. So once you give a name, you select the location you want to save and you give a description, and then I you click Create. OK, go so far. OK, come back into the Come back. So this is the page website to go. I mean to create a new supplier. Okay. So if I were to open this one, I I already opened the supplier page. Okay. So what do we need to do here is okay that you can see that in a manual way, how do I create a new supplier is. I open up the page, I click a new supplier, I give an internet, uh, give an internet name and the accent name of a company, like for example, Siberian Asia. Okay, and then industry is education. So this is a, a very typical way of doing the data entry. Of course, if you have more like the employee number, the description, the address, everything, then of course, if you have the information that you need to type it in. Then of course you need to spend more time in doing all these tasks. Okay, but now we are actually just trying to do in a very basic way. Just need the internal name, external name, and the uh, industry. And after I key in everything, I need to click the button save in order for me to create the entry. 
okay to create a new supplier okay so i just remove so if i were to open up the excel file give me one moment okay i open excel file that you can see that this is the excel file that you have the data inside all right generated by some system or you can just extract from uh from your sales department or from marketing department that required to add this into the system then you given all this information all this data and you will type in if imagine that you were to go through the process of copy each name and to create the uh this uh, new supplier it could be take a long time but what we need to do now is we just need to create a robot and to do all the typing all the data entry automatically all right so let's put it into action so again we need to use uh we need to indicate the excel file first okay again same thing use excel file okay and drag and drop into this part into the main uh, main main section so that i can see the activity use excel all right and same like just now that you need to indicate this uh excel file this supplier excel file okay so again i indicate where is the excel file of course uh, yeah let's see where do i save it okay module two more four yes this is where i save the file okay and it can be it could be in the desktop you just select the excel file wherever you save the file okay and here i reference the file as a, as a name and next thing which is about the same and yep i need to go open up the uh, supplier page from the website so i need to use browser again okay. then i use application slash browser this activity and of course i need to indicate my browser okay so if you come into this kind of situation where you have multiple uh multiple uh windows opening at the same time and you just want to make sure that you select the correct one so what you need to do is you just want to pause for a while okay i just click f2 f2 it will pause for a while and then you will see uh basically at the corner of the, the window you can see basically a countdown so once i minimize my excel so that i can make sure that i actually selecting my uh browser correctly so i click this one and you see when i select this one it come it point to the browser and of course it give it also recorded the url as well okay so what we need to do now is uh okay you will navigate to this page and what does it need to do is uh this one Wait, click on the new supplier okay so because every time once i save then you will come into the main page and then of course you need to click on button new supplier again okay so um yeah um before i continue so just allow me to go a quick one because i think i mean like i'm i'm just too eager to share and there are actually a lot more things that i can share but maybe just because of the uh, time limitation i will just uh, continue with this one only allow me just to take some time then um okay then in this part then i use the click button i try and drop the click button and i indicate this button this button yep it's a little bit hard to see yeah now you can see i will just hit, click this button once i select this one i confirm my selection okay so now first step is to click this button so if you click this button when you go in then it will come out this page so then the next step is to extract the information from the excel file to type into 
uh, this new supplier page. Okay, so again, pretty much similar that I just use the type me to. Okay, so where to type? First one, okay, for cell A2, the internal name, I just need to select here, internal name, and I need to type the internal name here. Okay. Um, yeah, it doesn't look, I mean, like overlapping doesn't look very correct. So I, did, I can just cancel and I select again. Okay. Yeah, so indicate, it looks like it can indicate the box which is the target and also the anchor correctly. Then I just click save, confirm. Okay, then on the selection on what value do you want to add into the uh, Excel file? I mean that you want to get from Excel file. So I just click the plus button to Excel and I indicate in Excel. Okay, so what value I want to extract. Okay, here A two. Okay, so I just I I just uh, sell A two. I just want to use this one to type into uh this part. Okay, and then the second type into second type into action. Okay, then we indicate the external name. Okay. Excellent name, conf confirm my vision. I mean, I confirm my selection. And of course, then I select and indicate in the value. So in the column, I, I just select that I want to use this one, B2. Okay. And I confirm again. So right now, this is the second type into activity. The first one is to type into internal name. The second one is to type the external name. Okay. And then the third one, of course, when we go into the website, okay, we need to select the industry. Select the industry. So I select item, I indicate in this part, industry. Okay, so uh, confirm. So right now I need to know what to select. So same, I refer back to the Excel file, I indicate in the Excel file based on this one, industry. Okay, when I confirm the selection, yeah, so it is done. And of course, don't remember about the last step. Once all the uh, entry is done, there's one last step to do, which is to click the button save to save the entry, okay? So again, then I need another activity. Click activity and I indicate the, but the button. Save. OK, so I indicate this one. And I save. OK. So once everything is done. You can try again. Okay, so I just uh I cancel this part. Okay, I close this one, and I close my Excel file. Then you can do start running. Okay, okay. so compound first time every every time when you create your your robot, you have to compile. The, the whole workflow before it can actually run properly. Okay, just let it go through those step, then it will start running. Okay, open up Excel file. Then come into this one. Yep. So you can see the robot is doing the job already. So done. Okay. So done. And of course, if uh, if if you're aware of that in the Excel file, in the Excel file, the supplier file, there is four entry. 
Okay, there is four data available. But what have I done is just uh, doing the one entry. Okay, so when you go to the when you go to the website, okay, you just create one. You just create one entry. Okay, so what can I do is, of course, the next the next step, I can basically use some function like for example for each row okay so there is a function that i mean like allow you to go through every single row in the excel file and to do the data entry so there is some activity like for example you see in the excel under excel for each excel row excel row what can i do so you can see if i were to do it um this part um, basically allow me just to do a quick edit basically let me just do something that i already pre-done earlier give me one moment Are we to run for a while? Yep. So you can see that um, what I do is basically um I use the function, I use the activity for each row, and then it go into the, the Excel file, take every entry and type into the website. So if I were to run this activity, so you can basically see that how does it actually work. Okay, just you start running, open up the website. Yeah. So you can see what I see do. So I, I didn't do anything. Okay, my hand is up, so you can see that the robot is basically doing the work. Okay, so you see, it, it go through every single line of the data and do the entry. Okay, my hand is up, I didn't do anything. Okay, yeah, Siberian, yeah, there is whole entry, that's why it repeat four times. So, I mean, here, I'm here just to demonstrate for, just to, to give a, I mean, give a feeling of how things can be done, okay? But imagine you have like thousand overlines to do the entry. How long would it take? And basically, you can see that for the four entry, it just use less number for the 30, 36 second in completing the job. So this is the power of the uh, RPA and how does how can it imitate the human in doing this repetitive task okay yeah so you can see that how powerful this tool is and how much possibility that we can create with this tool okay and yeah of course with the limit limited time that um i would love to share more but um um simply because of the the limitation of the time that i couldn't be uh, allowed to share more but just a few more steps uh, i would like to, to 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 let you know is that um yeah in this two hours two hour time you basically know that what rpa is and how does it speed up the enterprise processes and how can we use a web browser or application to enter uh information how do we transfer data from Excel to other applications or Excel to website automatically? And how can we use RPA for the, I mean, to use, use for enormous workload? And of course, uh, 
you know what is your unicorn name and there are many more things okay and of course um if you were to move uh into uh rpa okay there is i mean of course a multiple process it can go into from one single person into the departmental i mean the, your whole department to use i mean to start with the rpa initiative and then go into the whole organization and then go into the the transform of the business where it, i mean go into the the, the stage where every single person have one robot and then go into the end which is the gigabot economy which i mean like which the utilize rpa into realize the millions or not billions of ROI simply because i mean like it transformed the way how business used to be that looking into the ui path solution i mean like if you were to scale up uh in rpa you were to utilize rpa uh, uh ui path is the tools i mean like after i mean the is a good selection simply because it provides a complete set of uh tools okay you have the tools to discover uh, tasks or opportunities you have the tools to build robot okay you have the tools to manage to do the management of the robot and to do the management of the job and also there is a tools that create engagement in between employee or create engagement in between your customer as well and ui path have the complete solution in all these element and this this is also why they are the leader in automation they are the leader in the market okay and of course um if you would like to discover more opportunity of rpa within your organization within your company in Siberia, we do have a half day workshop that the half day workshop is basically specially designed for company that have uh, wanted to explore more into the rpa solution okay or the rpa opportunity it's a it's a half day workshop where we will be there in helping you to discover what are the manual process we have the high opportunity to convert it into a uh, automation okay and if you heard already that like, you already know that uh or you already identified some use cases for automation we we can be there to help your company to build a poc as well a proof of concept okay basically that allow you allow you to see the benefit of the rpa in basically talking about process optimization and of course what efficiency it can create along the way okay and if you are going uh to go on board with uh automation already that you already know that you this is this is the way to go and you want to deploy rpa within your organization in Siberia, we do provide the the training as well we do provide advanced rpa training that the rp i mean that like we have a rpa associate a certification that uh helping you to brush up your uh development skill that it is a five full day course that allow you to dive deep dive into the rpa knowledge about the skill related to problem solving about to create the processes and to develop automation solution with uipath platform all right any questions that uh i believe that maybe this gives you a lot of a uh, question about what are the opportunity that you can do that you can create within your organization with automation and of course if you have any questions or you want to discover more please you're more than welcome to uh be in contact with me at my my email my dot lim at cyber.com or you can also uh agree i mean reach out to our sales team at sales at is uh, cyber.com either one is fine then of course you want to discover more you want to ask some question please you're more than welcome to uh be in contact with me so that i can i can help you further or help you understand more about what is rpa about all right and 
thank you very much. This is the end of the um, the workshop, and I hope that uh, I mean like I truly hope that you actually get some information or you get some useful information that actually open up a new world in you that you can basically start thinking about how you can use automation in your work or how you can use it within your organization. So again, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. And I hope that you get something, you, you actually bring home something useful. All right. Thank you and have a good day ahead. And I see you again soon. Bye-bye.